Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I am Nicole and I live here in India and today I'm going to be watching a brand new video just dropped today because what happened actually just happened today. We had a successful mission to the uh, space station, the International Space Station, and we have an Indian astronaut in space. Ba -ba! Awesome! Let's go ahead and take a look. If you haven't already, give me your like, give me your subscribe, and let's go. This might be one of those moments we look back on and say, that's when everything changed. Because right now, as you watch this, a young man named Shubanshu Shukla is on his way to becoming the first Indian ever to reach the International Space Station, which is a massive science laboratory in space where astronauts from different countries live and work together while orbiting Earth. He's not a dual citizen, not an astronaut with NASA or some foreign passport, a fully Indian national flying under the Indian flag aboard a private space mission. And that's historic. But why does this matter so much? And why aren't more people talking about it? Let's break it down. For decades, India has contributed to space, from launching satellites to moon missions. But we've never had a single Indian citizen living or working on the International Space Station. Sure, we had Rakesh Sharma, who flew with the Soviet Union in 1984. And Kalpana Chawla and Sunita Williams, both of Indian origin, flew with NASA. But they were U.S. citizens. They carried another flag. Shubanshu Shukla is different. He represents something new. He's part of Axiom Mission 4, a fully private mission led by Axiom Space Company and went up in SpaceX's Crew Dragon, a special space capsule designed to safely carry astronauts to the space station and bring them back to Earth. And he's flying alongside astronauts from Poland, Hungary, and USA, a truly international crew. Their destination? The ISS, orbiting 400 kilometers above Earth. And by the time you watch this, depending on when you're watching, Shubanshu might already be there, or just hours away. The space capsule is expected to gently attach itself to the space station on, for June 26, 2025, Indian time. But whether he's arrived yet or not, the history is already made. Because the launch has happened, the mission is in motion, and India is now part of a new chapter in space. So who is he? Shubanshu Shukla is not a celebrity astronaut. He wasn't trained in NASA for decades. He doesn't come from Bollywood or politics. He's a trained spaceflight participant selected for this mission through a rigorous international process. His presence on board is a quiet yet powerful signal that India is no longer just watching the space race from the sidelines. We're now participating at the highest levels, even if it's not through ISRO this time. And that brings us to the big question. Why didn't this happen through ISRO? The answer is complex. India has always focused on cost-effective, self-reliant space missions. And while Gaganyaan, India's first human spaceflight program, is under development, it hasn't launched humans yet. Delays due to COVID and technical safeguards pushed it back. So when Axiom Space opened a door for private astronauts from around the world, it was the perfect moment. A shortcut to the stars, without waiting for bureaucracy to catch up and India seized it. Now let's talk about why this matters beyond national pride, because this isn't just about one man going to space, this is about opening doors for Indian scientists, Indian researchers, Indian universities. When Shubhanshu boards the ISS, he's not just sitting and staring out of the window. He will be conducting research, engaging in scientific experiments, and participating in international collaborations. In fact, one of the big objectives of Axiom 4 is microgravity research related to medicine, space farming, and tech demonstrations. And Indians will now be part of that conversation on location. But there's also a symbolic shift. India has always been proud of ISRO, and rightly so. But this mission shows something else, that India doesn't have to wait. We don't have to rely only on government institutions. Indian nationals can now access space through private missions, through global collaboration, through new pathways. Just like how private airlines changed air travel, private space companies are about to change space access. And India is early to the party. Shubanshu is proof of that. So what happens next? 
The mission is expected to last about two weeks. The crew will live and work on the ISS, then return to Earth using the same Crew Dragon spacecraft. And when Shu Banshu returns, he'll bring more than just experience. He'll bring inspiration for students, for entrepreneurs, for India's private space industry. This is no longer science fiction. This is Indian reality. And maybe the most powerful thing about this mission? It happened quietly. No huge government campaigns, no front page announcements, just one Indian stepping into history. While the world watches, or maybe while the world isn't watching, but you are. And now you know, India just made space history. And this is just the beginning. Fabulous. So happy that he's up there. He did make it up. We had the namaskar from, from the space station. I see it on the news. I'm so happy that India has uh, a national on board the International Space Station. I'm really looking forward to what um, Israel does um, in the future in, in regards to its manned station or manned uh, plans for, uh, for space flight. Um, they have a lot of different uh, things that are that they've done recently and that they're trying to do and that they're working towards in regards to goals and things for India and space and I, I just love that this is happening for India. So if you like the reaction please give a like please give a subscribe. If you'd like me to watch something else please put it in the comments I will read them. I often respond. I'd love to hear from you. As always I love you and bye-bye. Thank you.